Yes, sir. The new Fannie Mae guidelines. Yes. Yes. Now, some companies are getting waivers for that, like 50 to scan or items. How hard is that process? What good is it if everyone get a waiver and it's good for the market? The, uh, the 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 question is, uh, Fannie Mae has some stringent guidelines that are out there. Ultimately, as they go forward, they decide which mortgages they're going to purchase. It's based on a variety of different issues, including uh, maintenance fees that's uh, that's in arrears or hasn't been paid. It has to do with uh, buildings that have a high concentration of rentals. It has to do with uh, a number of units that have been sold in, in, in a building. So, so the question is, there's been a number of buildings in recent weeks that have gotten approval from a Fannie Mae perspective. Some of them uh, include uh, buildings like Infinity, buildings like Ivy, buildings like 900 Biscayne, buildings like 50 Biscayne. So the question is, given the fact that these buildings don't necessarily uh, appear to have all the fundamentally, or all, all, have all, all the questions answered from a Fannie Mae perspective when it's low and behold, um, th th is it really worth any good to have that, that seal of approval from Fannie Mae? I, I think is what you're asking. It's kind of like a pre-approval when you go for financing. You say, you go to the bank, you say, I want to get financing, and they say, well, you're pre-approved based on this, 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 and that. And then ultimately, is that worth anything, I guess is the question. Um, See, the, the, the hard part about Fannie Mae for a lot of the buyers who are out there are probably going to utilize Fannie Mae is the fact that Fannie Mae will typically require 20 to 25 percent down. And for many of that, those first-time home buyers, that's that, that's a deal killer for them. That's why many of the buildings. What what I would tell you is, look at a building that's FHA approved. If, if it's FHA approved, the end user purchasing using the FHA program, they only they're only going to need roughly about five and a half percent to get in. Uh, three percent towards uh, towards down payment, and then two and a half percent towards towards closing costs. So FHA, I think, is a little bit more indicative because that's today's buyer. Today's buyer is that first-time home buyer. It's going to be that person that's spending a little bit less. I mean, you know, really the way it it, it sort of plays out from what we're seeing, you have two hundred fifty thousand dollar purchase and less. It's moving all day long. Million dollars or more, that's moving all day long. It's the product that's in the middle that's so dependent upon Fannie Mae that's really sort of just sitting there, not moving. Because it, you know people are saying it's too highly priced, and even if I like it and it's great value, I don't qualify because there's no jumbo financing. Jumbo, jumbo financing is effectively a loan that's greater than four hundred seventeen, four hundred twenty-three thousand dollars. So people kind of get caught with that type of product. So two fifty and less moving all day long. A million dollars or more, it's moving at a pretty good clip, uh, surprisingly good clip. And what that would be is that's people who are fearful of what's going on with the stock market. They're fearful that GM is going to go bankrupt. They're fearful that Chrysler is done, so on and so forth. They're going back to the traditional brick and mortar to try to have something they can touch, feel, and ultimately rent out at worst case scenario if, if the world comes to an end. At least that's how they're thinking. Yes, sir. Uh, 